Hey everybody, this is Ramon Ray, founder of Smart Hustle Media. Thanks for joining me for I know it's going to be an exciting interview, exciting discussion, and I'm here to serve you and help you grow your business. If you like this interview, like this discussion, you can find much more of it at smarthustle.com. Follow, uh, join our podcast at smarthustle.com slash podcast. Every Thursday at 2 p.m., I send what some say, Allison, an inspiring email to my community uh, to help them further grow their business. So Allison Garrett, thanks for joining us today. Really appreciate uh, you sharing your insights with us. How are things in your world? Thank you. Things are amazing. Um, I am moving right along with the day-to-day -day and just excited to be here. I love it. I love it. So tell us what you are today and where you've been, which brought you to where you are today in summary. Yes. So in summary, I work with professional women who struggle with life setbacks and I help them break free from their mental prison so that they can experience true freedom in their lives and in their business. Um, I became a life coach because I was former inmate OL8397 with the Pennsylvania State Department of Corrections. Okay. Um, when I was planning my release, I had to find something that I could do where someone could not tell me no. Mm -hmm. uh, and I started a mobile spa, Pamper Perfect Mobile Spa, which led me into the coaching path because uh, so many people were so intrigued of how I was able to get a business started with, with, with my background and not having much resource. Um, and now I just help others. I love it. And what made you want to do that journey from being incarcerated to being out? Why did you pick that? You could have decided to, I don't know, be a flight attendant, airline pilot, uh, welder, you know, it, billions of things you could have done. So can you unpack that? Uh, if you can, what brought you there, if you'd like, yes. if you don't. And then the transition period to who you are today. Let's talk a bit about that, but then I want to get your tips and insights. But help unpack a bit that part of your story and your journey, how you ended up there, what we can learn from that for those maybe listening or young people especially, and then uh, how you made that transition to helping others. Absolutely. I started out with trying to figure out what could I do with what I already had. Okay. So um, thinking of a more immediate t t uh, way to make income, I'm like, what can I do? Huh. Like what's in my hand? So I had always, I went to school for nails and I did nails like on the side and, and made a little bit of money with that. So I'm like, okay, something with nails and then something that'll, um, you know, be, maybe be unique. Sure. So that's kind of how I thought about doing that. And there's actually where I live, there's like 210 professions that you cannot get licensed for just based on having a felony. Got it. So, so even if you say like, I couldn't be in a landscaping architect, okay. you know, based on my record. So wow. I, I want to go with something that I didn't, you know, that limited, you know, that was the least amount of, um, you know, pushback on which you. direction to move into. Got it. I love it. I love it. And so then tell us about the business. How did it start and, and what happened to it? Did you dissolve it? Did you sell it? Did it just not work out? What happened to the to the spa business? Or is that going yeah, on still? No. Today? Yep, it's still going on. Okay. Um, what I yeah, what I did was I started out with just friends and family, and I'm calling them up, and I'm like, hey, can we get some people together? I'll come over with my little basket of things that I got out from underneath of my bathroom sink, and I would just sit and and we did a party. So I would do manicures a party, and slowly it started to grow, um, and then I needed more people to help, and then I needed more categories. So now we're operating in 11 cities in the U.S. Yeah. And that is, and that is an in-home, uh, not a retail location, but I can call or book online somewhere in-home and, and somebody will come and pamper me for that day. Yes, correct. Yep. We work with groups of six or more. Okay. Um, and it's usually like special events. We do a lot of weddings. We do a lot of corporate events as well. Um, but yeah, we, we bring the entire experience of the spa to the location. I love it. And then how did you, um, what were some, what is, talk, walk us through some of the pillars of that business. For example, I know how you started it. It sounds like it grew mm -hmm. from word of mouth. It sounds like. Mm -hmm. and then, yeah, okay, go ahead. Yeah, it started with um, sort of word of mouth um, and more local. And ironically, um, I went to an event, a networking event, and I met someone um, who does a lot of media and PR. And she had an opportunity that actually was going on on the same day in a lot of different locations and it was broadcast over the radio um there was a show called um doctors monday mornings it was about doctors and what how stressful their monday mornings were so they wanted someone to be on site in the radio station providing many services for the radio host while they discussed this show uh, and the phone started ringing off the hook wow <laughs> wow wow so, I mean, yeah. so I mean, you, you were a clarify that you were a guest on the show then or no? Clarify, I missed. Oh no, I was I was not a guest. It was like um, 
the media company called and they said, hey, we have this, you know, Monday morning show that's starting. We're promoting it. And we have all these radio stations that are going to be talking about it. We would love your company to come and provide services at the radio station. So I had to find... Just in the background, like a background vendor, just... Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just find some some people. And, you know, I'm the kind of person that I, I really, I, I jump on opportunities and I feel like I always find ways to make it happen as opposed to say no. Like I wasn't right. ready in a sense, but I proved that I really was ready. And it, it was like the best, one of the best decisions of my life. And then what was the journey from scaling it from, from uh, one, yourself, I assume, the mm -hmm. first person, to 11 cities it's in, how did that work? What, what's that, give us the, the journey of how that scale uh, worked. Did it go from one to 11? Did it just gradually, as you were in Texas, as someone called from Seattle, you're like, <laughs> give us a little bit of that story. Yeah, so I, I, what, what ended up happening was, of course, I met a lot of people um, along the way. So it started out with just doing the cities that they requested. And then the ones that were, um, you know, that I had a strong presence in or I had friends or colleagues in that was in the spa world. Um, then we kind of started it with having like an area, uh, a person who actually, an uh, area lead. Um, and then just little by little. So I think it started out with, I was in Atlanta, Chicago, and then of course, like my local area, because nice. I knew people there. And then, yeah, over time, going to different events and meeting people like, oh, this would be great if I find a lead and they can find technicians, then we would make it work. I love it. And what's the model? How does that work? Is it franchise? Is it people who are working for you? Give us a sense of that model, how it works. Yep. So the model is it's not a franchise. It is currently, it currently operates as independent contractors. Got it. So I go to a website. I make a booking at my house, office, wherever it is. One yep. or more persons of your company show up and yep. you know how to do. Yep. That's right. exactly how it works. Everything's streamlined through one point of contact, um, which would be myself or my assistant. And then it is distributed to the technicians who are in the area that's requested. I love it. And then uh, and how much technology is used, if you don't mind revealing it? Or is a lot of it manual phone calls? Or do you have some cool AI powered? Yeah, system? no, nothing cool yet. Maybe it's in the maybe it's in the works or I haven't met okay. the person who does it yet. But yeah, pretty pretty much manual old school okay. i mean just basically call on the phone and get booked and the, um you know goes into a queue based right. on where the person's located either we can do it um sometimes we get requests from areas that we're not listed in but right. still could provide the service in if we have enough time got it let's say and, and let's remind us the name of the business again and, and please give us the website address for everybody yes. to know. it's pamper perfect mobile spa and the website address is the same Got it. So, Pamper Perfect Mobile Spa. Wonderful. You, okay, got it. Yes. So, so let's say that I want to work for Pamper Perfect Mobile Spa. I mm -hmm. and I have the credentials, whatever it is. How mm -hmm. do you know that I'm delivering the same service here where I am in the New Jersey area that Allison and Pamper Perfect Mobile Spa demand? How, what, how do you vet or, or uh, evaluate me? I want to work for you. I'm Okay, I wanted Ramon Way wants to work and assuming I'm sure there's some minimal certification which anybody can have. Yes. How do yes. you evaluate me from a jerk or not a jerk, good, not good, <laughs> whatever? Well, great question. We usually send um, newer technicians along to an event that's already um, okay. been booked. Um, and then they kind of shadow or work alongside. Um, and then usually the person that's with them is a trusted person who's been working with the business for a while. So they know, you know, different things to look for. Um, people assume sometimes that just because you can provide a service, you could still be a mobile operator, but it really is a different dynamic. So it does take a specific personality to be able to deal with, um, you know, going into someone's location as opposed to them coming to you. Right. And, and then how do you evaluate that? Meaning, so give me, talk, tell me more. I want to work with you. I, ha I pass the transactional. And again, I'm not in the, the pamper business, yes. but I can do nails or hair, whatever it is. Who evaluate is the person who, the person who you've already hired in the area evaluating me and gets back to you and says thumbs up, thumbs down? How does that work? Yep, it's a part of that. And then a part of that is um, giving specific scenarios like during a question, you know, like during okay. a Q and A. So it would be, you know, like let's just say, hey, um, you show up, you're at an event, you get booked, and you ran out of towels, right? right. You don't have any towels. You're in this person's home. How do you handle that? And those are real scenarios. So right. even depending on some of those answers, seeing how how the person um, caters to the guests in their own home, just, you know, a lot of different things like the etiquette that right. you, you can't really teach people. So that you're looking for, as you're looking to hire or work with a contractor, the person who's evaluating me is looking at that right as I come in the door. How do you smile, yeah. not smile? That's just, I'm being yeah. evaluated the moment. Got it. 
yes and it doesn't mean that it's like a no-go it just means that the person that's that I trust, they've been through a lot of events, so they know some of the things that might not work. They might right. say, hey, you know, she was an excellent technician. She did this right, she did this right, or, you know, but she was on her phone the whole time, or, you yeah. know, like different little things that you don't really think about, and it's not really like a, it's, it's more of an informal interview, you know, or maybe she stepped out of the room too much, or, yeah. you know, didn't um, use sanitation practices, things that you don't really have to tell people sure. in the industry if they're operating professionally. Got it. As you, as, as for those listening to this interview, Allison, who are looking to scale, what's your advice for us? You know, let's say those who are looking to kind of do a model like you, where they have one person or myself, those Ramones interviews, and I'm looking mm -hmm. to hire 10 yes. others to do interviews. <laughs> what's your advice for me to scale myself so mm -hmm. I can grow. What lessons have you learned, things you've done wrong that we can learn as we're looking to scale and do a replication type of model? Allison's not there, but this is your, not your name, but it's your company name <laughs> on it. Yes. What are some things we can learn? The biggest lesson that I learned was like I had to really let go of it. Like I know that I can duplicate the process, but I can't duplicate myself and not to be so hard on yourself with trying to, you know, scale your model. Um, I think also you have to rely on the support of um, sort of like you have to try it, you know, like you have to see if it's going to work. You, you have to uh, pretty much you have to already be prepared with a layout that if, if you didn't have all of the information about my business, I should be able to hand something to you and you be able to run with it. So yeah. it's sort of going into that process of creating the protocol Got it. Um, so that someone has something, even if they never, had a conversation with you. So it's sort of, if, if, if you're getting to that point where that's something that you want to do, you should probably have like some sort of a manual or protocol. It doesn't have to be anything fancy, but you have to have something that you can hand over to someone that they can do exactly what you would do. Almost like a flow chart. Like if this happens, this is next. And if this happens, this is next. And I think we forget that we want to just bring people on and, and throw them out to, to do what we do. But you, you have to have a, a lot more um, information for them to go on. Yeah. The word I've heard many times for that is systems and processes, you know, yes. to have it so it's repeatable, repeatable. Yes. Got it. And where do you see the growth? Where do you see the business going in another year or two? What's your dream? What's your desire? Uh -huh. in My dream is to, yeah, go through the process of licensing. Okay. Um, I think I've done some research um, just to kind of see that that would, there's so many people that want to, you know, operate mobily or even the, um, even how it's grown as an industry, more people are looking for at home. I mean, even right now, everything people want exclusively at home. So there's, you know, there's room for, for growth. But I think what I see is um, just building strong, um, just a strong presence yeah. um, in, in the industry and licensing. Got it. What are some of the biggest challenges that you think you'll face? That you, what are some of the challenges you faced in getting it to the point it is now? What mm -hmm. are some of the challenges that you foresee? challenges from where I am now honestly is pretty much what I was saying was trying okay, to do it is. all myself yeah it's like I'm doing it all like I, I need to talk to every person that I call because I in my mind I feel like if I talk to them it's a guaranteed booking if I you know source that out then maybe they don't have all the answers yes. so it was really the biggest um challenge that I had was trying to do everything answering the phones and showing up providing the services as well so I think um leave some of the things you know I always tell people like draw three columns, you know, the things that you are an expert at and love to do, yep. the things that you do if you have to do, but you don't really want to do, and the things that you don't like to do at all. Smart. The, things, <laughs> the things that you don't like to do at all, outsource those things. Find someone, pay someone, invest, hire, uh, you know, get an intern to do those things that you just don't like. So if I don't, if I know emails is a necessary part of my business and I just can't stand doing emails or I'm not great at them, I would outsource that. So that, you know, that, that's what I would say is that advice and um, biggest challenges. Moving forward, I would say the biggest challenge is um, probably currently, just based on everything that's going on, sure. <laughs> yeah. it's, you know, finding ways to still stay relevant and also be safe, keep people safe, um, because there's still a lot of hesitation all the way around, um, not just for clients, but for workers. Yeah, this is powerful. I wish you all the best in that business. Uh, let's turn to your, your uh, coaching business. Uh, what yeah. you do, helping women, I think specifically focus on women, yes? 
Yes, and a few brave men, but okay. yes. Okay, yes, good. <laughs> I hear you on that. Helping yes. women and a few brave men unlock the prisons of their minds. Um, yes. Tell us about that. What are some things that, that, are, that are important to you? And what are some similarities for those of us who've been fortunate, blessed, to not be incarcerated? What are some similarities between having your freedom taken away? We all know TVs and movies yes. that versus being free as you and I are today. What are similarities yes. and what are some things that you, that you share in your program or as you teach women? So what, what I've learned in my process was um, being incarcerated. Um, I learned that there were average everyday women that were stuck in the mental prison, which is how I started to evolve into not just helping people who were formerly incarcerated, but realizing that we kind of all want the same things. You know, we have dreams and, and goals and things that we want to achieve, but there's something that's holding us back. Um, and I recognize for me, I was in a mental prison long before I had been in a physical prison mm. solely based on things that have happened to me in the past that I just couldn't get, get through, yeah. maybe hadn't resolved or um, just traumatic experiences as a child um, that led me to believe things about myself um, that hindered me from moving forward and being successful. And that's kind of what I teach in, in my program. It starts out with the very basics of, you know, why we do what we do. And I connect um, people to their internal qualities that we never talk about, as opposed to being so connected to the external qualities. You know, like when we identify ourselves, we forget about the things about us that really make us up as opposed to just our physical makeup and where we live and what we drive and what we do and our role as a mom or a wife or a, a mother. Um, all of those things. It's like just connecting back to the core of who you really are helps you kind of uncover how you can continue to move forward. No, for sure. That is powerful. Um, and, and any particular women who, you, who you're finding out that are common, um, any commonalities? Are you finding there's commonalities that the people you're talking to, and it could be commonalities because they're attracted to you, or it mm -hmm. could be commonalities because we're human, or anything yes. else But I'm finding? Are you finding any common threads like Ramon? If I could solve these three things for all the women I come across, I'd be out of business, you know, if, or two yeah. things. Anything you that, got it. Well, I would say the main thing that most women more specifically that that I come in connection with um they they don't really know what they want they they're unable to describe or vividly explain what they want i mean i could ask someone what they want and they would say oh i just want to be happy right well what does that look like so i think that's the, the first thing is having like, a spa day <laughs> having a spa day could be <laughs> that's on the on the radar absolutely you 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 might think a little bit clearer then but yeah, I think that's it is most people don't really know what they want. They know that they're uncomfortable or they're desiring more or they, they're missing something, but they're unable to articulate it um, in a way that would help them connect to it or attract it. Got it. Yeah, no, that is powerful. I think it's powerful um, as well. I'm curious, uh, um, who do you look to for mentorship as you grow your business? Um, I know for me, I have a few names that I'll share in a minute, but do you look to anyone for mentorship or leadership or how are you, how are you bettering yourself? How is Allison improving herself? Yeah, I think what I've learned, I mean, I've always had people in the industry that I admire, okay. but I think it's always been important to me. And this is what I teach as well is you got to have like a, a starting five. So it's like five people in your circle that you, not only do you admire them from afar, but I could send them a text message at yeah. midnight and tell them about this idea that I have and they're going to help um, bring clarity to it for me. So just in my, in my personal circle, I have, um, you know, some incredible women um, that I can run things past or have a resource for um, that helps me continue to, to be better and not like, like not get stagnant or stuck, like always looking for, you know, how do I grow and how what I'm learning helps others. I love it. I love it. It's powerful. Anything else I didn't ask you that you wanted to share? Uh, no, I think, okay. um, I, I think just really if it, right now, just because of the time that we're in with, um, you know, with being in quarantine and coming out of, uh, you know, the, uh, the whole pandemic. And I think it's been a time of, for everyone for the self-reflection. Um, so I want people, I just want to kind of leave people with the idea that over this period of time, what have you, not only what have you learned, like what have you learned in the past, you know, 90 days or 15 right. weeks, um, but what are you going to do with what you learned? And, and just kind of think about that a little bit to help you move into, you know, just this, this next phase of, of, of 
your purpose and, and what it is that you're here to do. I love it. Allison uh, Garrett, one more time, can you give us your uh, full name of your spa company and give yes. us a website and then how people can reach you for your second business of coaching, if you wish, whatever you wish to share in that. Absolutely. Please. So Pamper Perfect is pamperperfectmobilespa.com. Um, and my coaching, I am considered the prison break coach. So that is prisonbreakcoach.com. You can find me on um, either of those platforms. I love it. And again, everybody, you know, my name is Ramon Ray, founder of Smart Hustle Media. Check out smarthustle.com for interviews like this with amazing people like Allison as we help you start or grow your business. If you're listening to this podcast, do me a favor, give it a review, give it a thumbs up. If you have to give it a thumbs down, don't do thumbs down. Just email me privately and let me know. Uh, and if you want to go to ramonemail.com, you can check out um, uh, the my email newsletter, which comes out every Thursday at 2 p.m. But again, thanks for taking the time to listen to the Smart Hustle podcast. And my name is Ramon Ray at smarthustle.com.